Hello everybody, welcome back. This is Jesus Flores from San Jose State University. In this video, we will be working on our soccer fitness and shooting. Our lesson focus again will be soccer fitness, where we will have an endurance based warm up with a lot of different quick feet, speed and agility drills. The speed ladder will be one of them, figure eights will be others, figure eight tag. We're going to use a box drill and then at the end we're going to have a core workout as well as a long cool down. For shooting we will go for power and aim. So once again in this warm up it will be an endurance based warm up. Um, in this example we broke the warm up up into three different sections just because it was a really hot day and we didn't want our excellent actor, Jimena, to, well, we didn't want her to overheat. We wanted her to be able to go through the entire lesson and, you know, in a comfortable fashion, not so much asking her to be overworked or anything like that. So we broke the warm-up in, up into three different sections. Each section is a minute long, and she's really just going for endurance here, running the length, the width of the field three or four full times. In those um, in those minutes uh, segments If you feel necessary to modify this warm-up and to add different dynamic stretches or dynamic movements, that's definitely something that you can do. If you need to shorten the warm-up or elongate it, that's again something that's very much up to you, uh, up to how warm you feel, up to how warm you want to feel. And once again, she ran the length of the field a total of about eight times, which is a good amount of distance. Um, again, it was a really warm day, so it didn't take much to warm her up. I believe she was sweating before she even started. Uh, but yeah, so that's something you can do. If you feel like you rather run laps, again, that's something that you could do as well. We wanted to use the width of the field just because it was good for our recording and we wouldn't have to have her moving in the background from a very, very far away and weird angle. So we just had her stay within this area just for recording purposes. In this first activity, we're going to be using a speed ladder. 
You do not need to have a speed letter as long as you have something that marks off sides and the front and back as well, kind of like into a box. If you have anything that does that, you can use that as well. You can use cones, uh, different pieces of sticks, anything that marks off the area is good. She will be doing a side-to-side -side footwork activity that she's about to demonstrate in the video. Uh, go ahead and take a look at that so that you can see the example. You can modify the example. She stays within the box that she's around in this example, but in the actual activity, she's actually moving forward in the, in the speed ladder starting from the very end. And in this activity, you want to make sure you're having both feet come into the box and both feet come out going side to side. Although she doesn't show it in the video, it's also good to use your hands the same way you would when you run. So you're pumping your arms with each step. If that is too difficult to do, um, that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It does take some coordination. And as you can see in her example, um, it does take some time to get it correct and to feel comfortable moving with speed. A few cues to pay attention to in this example are to pay attention to the way that she's on the tip of her toes during her movement. Um, this allows her to change direction with ease and it, it's not very good to be flat footed while doing these activities just because it takes kind of a longer segment of uh, movement. If you're on the tips of your toes, you're going to be able to change direction more quickly and you're going to, in a sense, feel almost lighter. Um, feel free to modify the speed and to get accustomed to the movement. Go ahead and try it slowly at first. Try to incorporate the arm pumps as well, the arm movements. And uh, again, really, really work on your footwork here. As you can see, she's getting a lot better and this is only about the third time that she actually did it which is excellent, excellent improvement in a very, very short uh, segment of time. In this second speed ladder drill, she will be working on ins and outs. So she is again only gonna be staying in this square just for demonstration purposes. Um, go ahead and also pay attention to the demonstration. Um, for this skill, it's gonna be very similar to the last, except it's gonna be more footwork based. So there's a rhythm to the movement that's a little more complicated to the rhythm that she was just doing, just going side to side. There's a footwork component that you will see where she's alternating her feet that, to go in and out of the square. Um, as you can see in the example here, we made it a little slower so that you can see the way she goes into the box and then out of the box. It is important that you switch midway which foot is going into the box. So if your right foot or left is going into the box for a minute or so, about halfway through that minute, you wanna make sure that your other foot is the one leading into the box. Just like in the last row, uh, it's, it will take some time to get used to the footwork, but once you get it down, it is an excellent, excellent activity or skill or drill, whatever you want to call it, to use to improve your footwork and feel a bit more coordinated in the way you move your feet. Now, although we're not using a ball in any of these activities, this will also affect the way that you're able to control your feet, to control the direction of your movements, um, to work on your balance as well, and overall just working on your fitness, just because if you do this for multiple minutes at a time, your heart rate will definitely be jump, jumping up. Um, once again, she's on her tiptoes, which is very, very important. Again, as you can see, her improvement is excellent in the amount of time that she's doing this activity. She's definitely learning the activity very, very quickly, which is excellent to see. In this third speed ladder drill, she will be working on high knees with one step inside each square. I wanted to do two, but that's a little more difficult. And even though it may seem simple, uh, getting the movement correct and having control of your body so that you're not overdoing the step or underdoing the step and you're getting one foot in each square actually demonstrated uh, somewhat of a challenge. So we decided to only do one step in each square. This drill is really going to help you work on your speed and your acceleration, as well as the form of your running. So as you can see, in this, in this scenario, she's trying to use her arms a little bit. 
Um, it's very important that you correctly alternate your arms and feet. So if your right foot is stepping, you're pumping your left hand. So in this example, unfortunately, we did not specify that it's supposed to be stepping with opposition the same way we walk or run correctly. But nevertheless, it is important to pump your arms as much as possible so that your running form improves. Um, I believe that she may have been thinking about it a little bit too much in the example and kind of demonstrated a correct form when we left her to do it on her own, which is good to know. Maybe we did, we talked too much, but uh, it is important to step with opposition in this. It's important to move as fast as you can through the squares, through the speed ladder to really get a feel for accelerating and sprinting in a controlled fashion where you're not running, you know, in open grass. You're confined to the squares and the speed ladder that you're using. Definitely give this one a try for a good amount of repetitions. In this final speed ladder drill, we will be working on our forward and backward movement. Uh, it's a very, very simple drill. May have been the easiest one for her, I believe. Um, you're again going to be want to be on the tips of your toes and changing direction quickly using quick feet, light, soft movements, not pounding your feet to the ground really hard. That doesn't really work. Uh, if you can and if you feel comfortable, definitely incorporate your arms. Your arm movements are very, very important when running and changing direction. As you can see in the example, she is going to be leading with the foot that is in the direction that she's moving in. So for example, in this scenario, she is moving with her left foot because she's moving in left direction. Now she's going to switch to her right foot to lead because now she's moving in her right direction. As you can see again, like in the other speed ladder drills, it does take some time to get used to the movements uh, to really have control over the coordination of your feet to your hands, to your body. Uh, in this scenario, she's really, really taking her time. Again, this was not an instruction from us. That was kind of just the way she wanted to do it to feel comfortable with the movement, which is definitely a smart thing to do, especially if you don't feel comfortable doing the movement quickly. Um, it's definitely, a good idea to go slow so that your feet get used to the movement and then when you're more comfortable with the different rhythm that you are doing you can then increase the speed increase the power of your steps and really could turn this into a fast speed agility drill so again here she's going really really slow which is excellent because she's doing it 100 percent correct it's a lot more important than doing it wrong and fast it's better to do it slow and correctly as she's doing it right here. In this activity, we will be working on our figure eight drill. So this drill focuses on changing direction while moving at the highest speeds possible. So we're gonna be sprinting for the most part once we get the movement down correctly. If you do not feel comfortable with the movement yet, you still need to memorize the way the rhythm of the movement goes, which cone to go to first, second, third, and then back. Then go ahead and walk it or jog it slowly so that you feel more comfortable with the movement. Once you feel comfortable, definitely increase the speed, work on your footwork, taking small steps, accelerating and exploding quickly. Go ahead and watch this demonstration to see how the order goes. Ready, go. Around. Nice. Well done, well done. That's perfect, perfect. Excellent. And then you freeze. <laughs> Around. Nice. First of all, let us appreciate that super clean dab. Um, all jokes aside, as you can see, there is an order to correctly go through the motion of the cones, the direction 
changes if you're going in the opposite direction. It's important to go in both directions, which you will see us do in a bit. Um, we turned this game into a tag game just to better help uh, Jimena learn the movement just because this is a completely new drill for her. I wanted to have her chase me like a tag game, which you will see. And in this way, she's able to learn the movement without really thinking about, you know, which cone do I go to first, which cone do I go to second. She, all she's really doing is trying to chase me and tag me. And again, she's running as fast as she can. She's cutting the cones as fast as she can. And in the process, she's learning the correct order of which cone to go to and which turn to make. Let me know when, Chef. Go, director. Catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me, catch me. Go. As you can see, I definitely took it serious and did not let her catch me, really just to encourage her <laughs> to really move as fast as she can and to get through the motion as fast as she can. It's supposed to be sprinting. It's not a jogging activity. Go, 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 go. Another good agility drill is this box drill that we are demonstrating here. Uh, you're going to want to be able to slide, sprint forward, and then back step backwards, okay? So it doesn't have to be a very large square. If you're limited to only your backyard, it's okay to have a really small square. But as you can see in the demonstration, we're sprinting both forwards and backwards and working on our sliding when moving from side to side. So after this demonstration that we just did, we actually took it a little bit further and really, really started to sprint. We were both very tired by this point. Again, it was a very hot day. But we definitely did give it our all. We tried to move as fast as we could. Our breaks really only came when we're sliding, which uh, are really the only parts of this drill that are a little bit slower. But when it came to the sprinting forward and the, the really sprinting backwards, we really took it serious and really, really tried to give it our all. Uh, it's important for us to do that. You know, it helps you increase your agility and your explosiveness when moving. Of course, soccer is an endurance sport, but it's also a sport in which you change direction a lot, you change speed a lot. Sometimes you're jogging, sometimes you're springing for the ball. So this is a great drill to use. Again, within a small space, it works fine, just like in this large space. And you also don't need a whole lot of equipment. All we needed was four markers, don't have to be cones. It could definitely just be shoes or water bottles, whatever it is that you have at home available to mark the ground for you. In this next drill, we started working on our core. As you can see, Jimena did a really good job about keeping her knees as straight as possible, bringing her legs up to create a 90 degree between her legs and her body, keeping her back flat on the ground. If it helps, um, you don't have to have your legs go up as high or go as low as we're having them go. If you tire out, go ahead and break this up into sets. Uh, we had Alejandra and Jimena, our two participants for today, complete the drill for approximately a minute. Um, as you can see, it's definitely doable. Jimena did it for longer than a minute because she demonstrated with me as well. So this is definitely a good drill to really increase your core strength. Core strength is very, very important as well for both endurance and uh, mobility, explo explosive movements, and change of direction. So go ahead and modify this activity if you need to. Uh, there's other core exercises to do as well, but it's definitely an important part of soccer fitness. Core fitness is an important part of life in general. So any core exercises on a regular basis will help not only your soccer abilities, but your overall health and posture as well. Imagine it's a pizza. We're almost done. How about you keep your legs straight, Ali, huh? Jimena's doing him way better. <laughs> and two more. Give me two more. Two more, both of you. Two more, both of you. One more, one more, one more. Yes, Jimena. Yes, Ale. Yes. And now to warm up our feet for kicking and shooting, we ran a really, really easy and quick drill 
Uh, it's a passing and trapping drill just to get more accustomed to the soccer ball, to warm up with the ball and really get a feel for it, get our feet ready for what's coming next. In this example, you'll see how we ran the activity. It's a very simple drill. Um, go ahead and extend the period of time that you perform it in. You can definitely modify that. You can change the way the passes are. One, one more, one more. So you freeze there, now you're going forward. And three. A few other warm up drills that you can do are these uh, kicks that we're going to demonstrate in a short moment. These kicks also help to stretch the muscles in, around the areas that will be, you know, either catching your foot or pulling the foot to perform a kick. Um, uh, Jimena will demonstrate shortly. These are important warm-up movements to do before you want to make any big kicks just so that you don't injure any muscles in the area for doing any explosive movements or over stretching movements. So as you can see here she will be kicking with both her right foot and her left foot as well. It's important to do an equal amount on both foot on both feet sorry and also performing the same amount of kicks with the actual ball with both the right foot and the left foot. So in this activity, we ran it for about two minutes or so. Um, we didn't want to run it for too long just because we had been working on our fitness for a good 20 minutes already. Um, but it is a definitely, a, it's definitely a useful drill to have. You can definitely change the way the passes are done. Like I said earlier, if you wanted to practice bounce passes, that definitely can be done. That's something we will do in a future video. The way that we're running this activity is um, a very, very low intensity way just because we're really just wanting to get more comfortable with the ball because we've been you know, doing a lot of quick feet movements and a lot of explosive movements. Now we're going to slow it down a little to really focus on our control and our accuracy. Right? So we're going to want to get comfortable with both of our feet, touching the ball, moving, uh, passing while moving, controlling while moving. It's a great drill. You could definitely apply it to any you know soccer training regimen you can definitely modify the time of the activity as well if by this time you feel like you don't need to warm up with the ball uh, by no means you can definitely scratch this part of the video move on to the shooting um, but again this is just to get comfortable with the ball and really slow down our movements to more coordinated small short movements with a purpose of getting good touches, a lot of repetitions, and a lot of passes and traps. This way, this way, this way. In our first shooting drill, we're going to be going only, only for power. We're not going to worry about aim. We're not going to worry about accuracy in any way. We're just going to want to get comfortable swinging our foot, providing as much power as we can, uh, really lunging forward and giving the ball as good a hit as possible, trying to hit the net, make it move as much as you can. Don't worry about where it goes. Just worry about the amount of power that you're giving the ball. In this demonstration, we want to show how to plant our foot next to the ball and really give it a good swing. In the actual demonstration, you will see how she runs up to the ball and gives it as much power as she can. She's not left-footed, although 
She did really just go for power, did not worry about aim. With her right foot, she definitely shows a little more control, more comfort. Now, in the actual drill itself, you're going to want to have a cone set up so that you know where to start your run or your trajectory uh, to go to the ball and really give it as much power as you can. Definitely would be helpful to have a partner to shag balls, a parent, brother, sister, friend, whoever it is to help you set up the balls. If you can have a training partner and you guys can alternate this drill, that would be ideal. That way you're both getting uh, maximum activity out of this drill and you're kind of, you know, you have a break, you have time to rest your legs. As you can see, she's just really going for power, not worrying about the aim or anything like that. If you have a weaker foot, for example, like with Jimena, it's her left foot because she's not left-footed, it's definitely important to have as much practice on your left as you're having uh, with your right, just to increase your comfort with shooting with your left. Uh, just because it is important to be able to use both feet in soccer, if you favor one foot over the other, it could lead to, you know, failed attempts at shooting if the ball is not placed in a comfortable position for you. Being more versatile is better and being capable with both your right and left foot is better as well. In the second activity, the second shooting activity, we will be working a little more on our aim now. The target should be a big target. We're not working like a professional using small, tiny targets. This is a big target, as you can see. I'm marking them off. It's the edges of the goals, but they're big edges. Anywhere in the middle is where we don't want the ball to go. Once again, we're going to have someone shag the balls, and that same person will now be passing the ball to us. Um, so the importance of this drill now is that she will have to incorporate trapping or controlling the ball before shooting. So she's not just running up to the ball anymore and just giving it a kick. Now she's kind of putting a few skills together, uh, controlling the ball first. In some cases, she tries to hit it first touch, which, as you can see, does not help as much. It would be better to trap the ball first and then give it the kick. So... Uh, if you can be in an environment where you have a big goal like this so that you have a big target, that would be the ideal environment for this drill. If you don't have that available, anything like a wall would also work. Um, if you have more than two balls, that would also be ideal just because you wouldn't have to shag as much. But like I said, try to get as many repetitions as possible, as many kicks in as possible. We're not trying to yeah, have a few kicks and then call it a day. So the best way to improve these skills is to really, really have a lot of repetitions, a lot of practice, and a lot of experience with the ball to increase our comfort levels with it. And finally, we will be having our cool down. In this case, we had Jimena just walk it out. Uh, we could also jog and do other dynamic stretches. She felt comfortable just walking. And, you know, you can have this run for about a minute, two minutes, three minutes, whatever it is that you need to cool down your body. Afterwards, definitely would be good to have some stretches. For the sake of uploading to YouTube, we had to cut this video a little short. Um, but... Like I said, any type of stretching or cooling down is definitely something to do at the end of your workout. And also, do not forget to hydrate at the end of your workout. Once again, thank you for joining us. 
In today's lesson, we worked heavily on our fitness while focusing mostly on our footwork as well as our speed and changing of direction. We also worked on our shooting, which focused mainly on our power and accuracy using only large targets. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and leave a constructive comment for our YouTube page.